Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a two-player Pong game. And as usual, we will begin by putting some comments at the top with our name and so then we're going to go through and delete the comments that are already here for us. Okay, and now let's think about what we need for a Pong game. Um, we're going to need a ball to bounce back and forth. We're going to need uh, paddles. And um, those are going to be the content that we're going to need. We're going to need a, a screen to draw it on. We will always do that. So we're going to set up a screen rectangle. And um, need to be able to read the paddles for the two players. Uh, and respond to those. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started with our content. Okay, uh, for content, I'm going to need a um, texture 2D, and I'm going to need a ball texture, a paddle one texture and a paddle two texture and uh, actually you know what we're going to need a uh, screen as well and I usually don't put texture on there so we'll just call that screen I'm sorry we do to put texture on that it's the other one and then we need a rectangle and we need a rectangle for the ball And this is the one we don't put the name on. So we'll just call the screen rectangle screen. Um, we're going to need a random number generator. That's going to be fairly typical in, in most of our games. So And then I'm going to have to read in the paddles. So I'm going to have to have a um, gamepad state variable for both paddle 1 and paddle 2 okay now I always like to get something working right away so uh, what I'm going to get working right away is probably what needs to be the first thing to get working and that is uh, just to draw the screen and so let's initialize our screen rectangle and we're going to do it in one statement here and uh, the, we're going to use the second version here. I just hit the down arrow. And our x uh, is going to be 0. Our y, though, is going to be, uh, we're going to leave, uh, we'll try 50 pixels at the top for the score. And the width is going to be um, 800. And the height then would be, uh, if we take 50 off of 480, height's going to be 430. Okay. So that will be our uh, rectangle. And uh, then down here, we're going to have to load the content for it. And I'm going to have to go find myself a white square. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, I want it to be white so I can specify the color that I want. And I'm going to keep that out here on SkyDrive in my content. And what I'm looking for here is a... Um, just a white rectangle and uh, here's one um, and it looks like that's actually it doesn't matter as long as it's as, whoops it does too that's uh, let's do a rectangle here and uh, this one is actually made to be a panel but it doesn't doesn't matter what size is uh, it just has to be uh, white so we're going to add that and um, I'm just going to I'm going to change the name of this here. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, 
and I can use a white rect rectangle for any rectangle that I need on the screen. So I can use it for the screen background, I can use it for paddle 1, I can use it for paddle 2. Um, I can't use it for the ball because we're going to make the ball round. Um, so now in load content what I want to do is I want to uh, get the screen texture. And it's going to be a texture 2D and it's going to be called white rectangle. Okay. And then down here I'm going to uh, draw it. And uh, so I need to do a sprite batch dot uh, begin before we draw. And a sprite batch dot end. And then in between I want to draw my um, screen texture and I want to use the screen rectangle whoops and I'm going to make the screen uh, blue okay and I didn't capitalize color okay color dot blue and now we should be able to run it and there it is now we can always adjust that uh, space up here at the top if we want to later on uh, we can change the background color from cornflower blue if we want to uh, all those things are going to be easy to do uh, we just have to change a few things up and initialize um, and we want to change the color we can change the color down here so uh, now we've got a background um, now uh, before we begin um, let's uh, what else do we need? Um, well, we need to uh, place a paddle on the screen, okay? So um, we've got a couple of textures here that we are going to use, and we're going to use the same texture because all we need is a, a white rectangle. So paddle one texture equals, and you know what? It's the same thing, so I'm just going to copy this. And And the same thing for paddle two. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to decide how big we want our paddles to be. And uh, so let's uh, create a paddle one rectangle equals new rectangle. And uh, let's make our uh, paddles, um, let's try 20 pixels. I think the numbers I saw before were 20 by 90. And uh, that's the width and the height though. Paddle 1 is going to be on the left side, so we want his left edge to be the uh, left edge of the screen. And uh, we want his uh, Y coordinate to be um, let me see, now it's I'm going to change this. I'm going to do. I'm not going to do this one uh, in one command. I'm going to do it in several commands. First, we're going to decide the size of the paddle. So the paddle rectangle dot width is going to be uh, 20 pixels, and paddle one rectangle dot height is going to be. We'll do try, try 90. And then now that I know what those are, now I can do paddle rectangle dot x equals uh, screen. Darn it. Dot left and paddle rectangle dot y uh, I want to center it on the screen okay well if I'm going to center it on the screen it needs to be halfway between the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen okay so uh, I want screen dot top plus screen dot height divided by two okay and that'll get me to the middle but I want half of the paddle to be above and half of the paddle to be below. So I have to subtract uh, paddle one dot rectangle uh, paddle one rectangle dot height divided by two. And that's why I wanted to do this first. Uh, so now I've got a value for height here. If I had uh, turned these instructions around, uh, paddle rectangle dot height would have still been zero. So um, we'll do that. And uh, so now we've got uh, a paddle, 
and uh, that's uh, where we're going to draw it on the screen. We're going to read in the te uh, texture here. And now let's go down here and let's draw it. So uh, let's do sprite batch. Dot. No point in starting on the second paddle if we can't get the first paddle right. So let's get the first one right. And we'll call that paddle one rec uh, texture. Paddle one rectangle uh, color dot. We'll make that white. Okay. And now let's run it and see if a paddle shows up on the screen for us. And it does, and it looks to me like it's probably centered uh, as well. So um, if we can do the one on the left, it's pretty easy to do the one on the right. So let's go back up here and um, be careful when you copy and paste uh, because it's easy to miss something that should be changed. Um, so I need to be real careful here. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change all occurrences of Paddle 1 down here. I'm going to select all of that, and then I'm going to right-click. And um, uh, do a find. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let's cancel that. Uh, do a Control-H from the keyboard, which is Find and Replace. And I want to find Paddle 1, and I want to replace it with Paddle 2, and I just want to look in this selection. I don't want to do it all over the entire program and then do replace all, and it replaced five of them, and so we're done with that. Now, I want the width and the height to be the same. Uh, obviously, the, the paddle should be the same size for both players, but where do I want its x coordinate to be? Well, I want to go all the way over to the right edge of the screen, and then I want to back up the width of the paddle. Okay. And what do I want its Y coordinate to be? Uh, well, actually, I want the Y coordinate to be the same. I want it. To, I want them both to be positioned in the middle of the screen. So now let's go down here, and uh, let's uh, copy this command, and just change the ones here to twos, and run the program. Yeah, we got a couple of paddles there. Okay. Now, uh, the paddles should respond to the uh, game pads, and we're always going to be reading the game pads and responding to the game pads in update. Okay. So, uh, in update, uh, we want to read pad one, and it's going to be, you know, if you can't remember the command, it's uh, there's always a, a version of it right up here. So it's going to be everything up to here. And next, I'm just going to do Control C, and I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to do Control V and paste that in, and that'll get the game state uh, or the game pad state for pad one, and then pad two equals, and this one has to be two, and then you have a semicolon in the end. Okay, so that'll read them for me. And then what am I looking for? Um, we're going to use the left thumb stick on each one. So let's get player one to work first. So um, what I need to do is I need to decide how much I want the uh, paddle to respond in the vertical direction. Um, every time, uh, every sixtieth of a second, if I see a, a change in the in the state of the thumbstick. So um, I need an x and a y uh, value here. Although the x value is always going to be zero on the paddles because the paddles cannot move horizontally; they can only move vertically. So we'll just do an int variable here, and we will call that. Um, um, pad one x, not x, y speed, and pad two y speed, and you know what I'm calling them paddles, uh, pretty much every place else. So, uh, I'm calling the images on the screen the paddles. I'm calling the game pads pads. So, um, and then I need to initialize those. And so let's do that in here. And uh, paddle one y speed equals. And I'll just pick a number. We'll try five. And uh, paddle two 
y speed equals 5 as well. Okay. And then what I want to do down here is I want to look, let's do, let's do pad 1. If uh, pad 1 dot thumbsticks dot uh, left thumbstick dot, and we move it up and down, so all I care about is the y. And if it's greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, uh, equal to, if it's greater than 0, then they have pushed it up. And so what I want to do is I want to move the x coordinate of my paddle up, which means I have to subtract the the y speed from it. So uh, it's paddle one rectangle, and its y coordinate uh, is going to have minus equals means subtract from um, the paddle one y speed. And if had one dot thumbsticks dot left uh, dot y is less than zero, then paddle one rectangle dot y plus equals paddle one y speed. Okay, so that should allow me to move it up and down, and uh, I'm already drawing it and all I'm doing here is changing the coordinates, so I don't have to change anything down here. I should be able to run that, and I should be able to push the thumbstick on player one, and let's push the thumbstick on player one, and he moves up and push it, and he goes down, and whoops, it looks like we have a bit of a problem here, and He's moving a little unevenly, but I think that is simply caused by the fact that I'm also recording this at the same time, so the recording software is probably slowing things down. But he's going too far. I shouldn't be allowed to move him off of the screen. So um, he is responding correctly. Now let's uh, go back and see if we can keep him from going off the screen. Okay. So after we update his position, then we need to check again to see if he's gone too far. Okay. Well, let's check to see if he's gone off the top. That's the easy one to do. Uh, if pad uh, if paddle one rectangles dot y is okay that'll be the top of the rectangle. If that is less than the top of my screen, then I got to move it back to screen top. That's the that's the highest I can let it go. So paddle one rectangle dot y equals screen dot top. Okay. And again, try that. Uh, don't make a bunch of changes. Just make one change at a time and, and see if it works and if it doesn't. Uh, so let's try it here. I'm going to push up. And good enough. I'm pushing it and he's not going any further. Now we just got to keep him from going off the bottom. Now, when you get to keep him from going off the bottom, we need to make sure that his Y coordinate, which would be, you know, I can't move the mouse out here because it goes away, but the Y coordinate would be, let's, let's move. Okay. So the y coordinate would be like right here, and uh, I want to stop when when the y coordinate plus the height of the paddle uh, equals the bottom of the screen. Okay, so let's stop our program and let's go in here and whoops paddle one rectangle dot y plus paddle one rectangle dot height. If that is greater than screen dot height, I'm sorry, screen dot bottom, then I want to bring it back. So I want paddle one rectangle dot y to be equal to screen bottom minus paddle one rectangle dot height. Okay, go to the bottom and then back up the size of the rectangle and let's try that. Okay, I'm going to push him up and he stops. I'm going to push him down and he stops. Okay, so I can move him up and down and no further. I can try to move him left or right and nothing happens. I'm only responding to the y value. Okay, so let's stop that. And let's stop the video there, and we'll pick up with uh, the rest of it in video number two.